It's 2020, so who actually bothers to learn how to program? If you actually need to know anything, you just go to a website like Stack Overflow and all your answers will already be there. Now, in reality, Stack Overflow is actually an incredibly useful website and anytime I do any programming work, I generally have it open. So today we're going to look at a tool called How To which will let you search both Stack Overflow and Unix Stack Exchange directly from your terminal. So let's start with a very general query of how to split a string. So the way this works is we don't actually quote the thing we're searching for, we just pass it in as separate words. So how to split a string. And as we're going to see if we give it a second, it's going to show us a result on Unix Stack Exchange. Now, the result that it shows is whichever result on Unix Stack Exchange or Stack Overflow has the most number of votes. So basically what you get is the name of the article and then anything that's inside of a code block is going to be highlighted in a different color. Now on my terminal, that is yellow because my terminal color scheme actually lines up with the color names. But if yours doesn't, then it might be a completely different color. So you also get a link directly to the post as well. So if we go to that now, as we're going to see, give it a second to load up. These blocks right here were what was actually highlighted in yellow on my terminal and those are inside of code blocks over on the post. So obviously we can go to the website if we want to see alternative solutions, but we can also see this from the terminal as well. So let's actually do that search again and give it a second to reload it. Now, if you don't press any other key, you'll notice you can actually press space and it will show you more options. So basically this shows us a list of things that actually match that query. So let's go to say... I don't know, this one right here. And what it's going to do is show us a list of all of the comments and order them by the number of votes. So you can scroll through this with either your Vim keys or your arrow keys. Personally, I like using Vim keys just because I'm a Vim user. So let's actually press enter on one of these and that will actually open up this post. So if the post is too long, you will actually have the ability to scroll through it. So let's go back to the one that we actually had open before. So this one here and let's go to this one. Is that long enough? Yes, it is. So you can scroll up and down through this with your J and K keys and basically see the entire solution. So if for whatever reason, the top result isn't what you actually want to see, maybe there's going to be something useful for you in this list here. And we can also go and press B and that's going to then go and open that post up in our browser. And nicely, it doesn't just jump us to the question, it actually jumps us directly to the solution. The one problem I have with this interface here here, is it doesn't actually show the uh, you know suggestions under the actual solution. So if the solution isn't actually correct, you do have to actually go to the website to actually see why people are saying it isn't actually correct. So we can get out of this interface by pressing escape. Now another thing that I don't like too much about this application is you can't actually do another search from this interface. You actually have to quit all the way out of it and then do another search from your terminal. It's not that big of a deal, but I would like to see a way to actually do a search while you actually have that list open. So one other thing about doing a search is sometimes a query will be a little bit too generic. So let's try doing a search for string. I don't know if we get a result for this one. Okay, we got a result for that one, but let's actually search for something like int. So how to int, and as you're gonna notice, there we go. So cannot find any reasonable answer for this query. So in this case, we're going to wanna do a language query. So the language tags are whatever the tags being used on Stack Overflow actually are. So things like Go, Python 2, Python 3, C++, C, Java, so on and so forth. So let's do something like this. How to dash L, let's do a Java query and search for integer limit. Now I haven't actually done this one off camera before, so I don't know what we'll get. And that seems to be basically what we'd expect. So yet yeah, I don't have a problem with this answer. So this is the max value of integer. Let's go to the actual post itself. And yeah, this is basically as we'd expect to see. Cool. So let's do another query. Let's actually do a C++ query this time. So let's search for something like how to dash L C++ uh, unique pointer and give that a second and this is how to declare standard unique pointer and what is the use of it yeah that seems to be a pretty good answer one thing I did notice is that for some queries it seems to just completely break so let's actually try one of those out so how to dash L C sharp so this is a C sharp query this time and hello world. Now, I find it very hard to believe that there isn't a hello world question for C sharp, but if we go and search for this, as we're gonna notice, 
basically it just errors out. And this isn't just a problem with searching for C-sharp questions. If we do the integer limit for this one as well, as we're going to see, we get a proper response for this one. But it's just the Hello World query. And Hello World works in other cases. So let's do the same thing. But this time, let's do it for Java. So Java, Hello World. And this one will work just fine. So I don't know what exactly is wrong with that one query. Now, one interesting thing about this is that Stack Overflow doesn't actually distinguish its language tags from all of the other tags. So things like Unity and React and Unreal, those all have their own tags on the website. So what you can actually do is how to dash L and then do a Unity search. So do something like say change material. Now this is Unity, the game engine, not Unity, the desktop environment. So basically that's how you change material inside of Unity. Or you could do something like how to dash L react. So this is going to be for the web framework and then search for how to do a react function and give that a second. And there we go. Now, judging by the fact that it's dash L, which I assume is supposed to mean language and not dash T, I'm guessing this isn't really intended behavior, but it does make the app much, much more useful. Now, when you don't specify a language, the search will only be on Unix Stack Exchange. In older versions of the application, it actually did show them both at the same time. And I feel like that would be much more useful, but now it's sort of changed. So generally, if you're not going to use a language, you should be just using it for general Linux queries. So things like, say, how to unzip uh, BZ2. Give that a second, and that will give us a pretty good answer. Or... I don't know, how to print a file. Or something you're probably not going to be doing that often, how to create a RAR. But I guess if you're working with Windows or Mac OS people, maybe that's something you're going to want to do. Now, I think this application could actually be incredibly useful. However, there's one slight issue with it. It only does Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange. And when you specify a tag, it only does Stack Overflow. But I imagine that all of the sister sites for Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange are things like Mathematica, Aviation, Ask Ubuntu. I imagine they all use a very similar API. So it would be really cool to see this application work for all of the Stack websites. So I could say, I want to search on, I don't know, Ask Ubuntu for GNOME, or I want to search on Mathematica for polynomial, things like that. So from the user side, basically what you do is you would add an extra option to specify which of the sites you want to use. And then the dash L option would become a dash T option that works on any of the websites. Besides that, though, I've really mentioned most of my other problems already. Now, one other thing I would like to see, though, is when you actually do a search, rather than instantly showing you the top search, maybe add in an option that automatically takes you to that list of other solutions. I think that actually would be pretty cool because sometimes the top solution isn't actually the best solution. Sometimes it's going to be something a bit further down the list, or maybe the query you used didn't exactly show you the question that you wanted to see. Maybe one of the other things in the list would be a better match. Because this is relying on the built-in Stack Overflow search, sometimes you might not get the exact response you want with the first query you actually do. So you might have to tweak it a little bit and eventually you'll get the thing you want to see. But generally, unless you're trying to do something really complex, you're probably going to get something fairly reasonable. So if you're trying to do a basic search, like you forget how to do unzipping a BZ2, as you saw, that came up with a perfect response straight away. But anything really specific and you might struggle to find an answer because you are still relying on a forum so sometimes the questions just won't be answered. Now I do want to mention that this is an NPM application. Now I know that a lot of people don't like them but in the case of something that is basically just a wrapper around a search engine I don't really think it's that big of a deal to use it. If you just install your global packages properly it's not really a big deal. I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chuka, Bento, Joseph, Pitity, Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Merrick, Mikkel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilver. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be links down below to my Libra Pay, Patreon, Subscribestar, all of that sort of stuff. 
I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere you can listen to podcasts. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.